Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we have a new one. We have a Camry AK2 Plus Mini PC that we're going to be reviewing. And I know it says Joey's Retro Handhelds, but I can fit it in my hands and I can walk around with it, so it counts. Let me also point out that Camry sent this for review uh, and so they haven't seen the video ahead of time or had any input in anything I say but I want to let everybody know that it was definitely sent for a review and something that I received for that purpose. Just taking a look at what's in the box, and we had the mini PC, then the power adapter, HDMI cable, and some screws. Lastly, we have the vase amount and the manual. Let's take a tour of the device. On the front is the LED to show if it's on. There's the power button, the two USB ports, and the third. That's USB 3.2. And then on the back, we have all of our other ports, another USB, the power, two HDMI, the gigabit port, as well as the locking. And then on the top there is how you get the top off. So it's just kind of an unlock, and I'll show you the teardown as we get to it. On the bottom, you can see the fan where it's built in for cooling, and then also where the vase mount would go if you want to mount this device to a wall or uh, maybe something else, but you have the option. Overall, it's a pretty small mini PC, which it's in the name, so it's mini. Just to give you a size comparison, here is the RG405V, and you can see it's basically just as tall as it, and it's a pretty small form factor. So for those that are wondering how big this thing is, that's the size comparison for you. It's about as big as a Game Boy. I'm going to leave the specs on screen here, but the things to point out is it's an N100 processor. So it's a 4 core, 4 thread, uh, 3.4 gigahertz, uh, does 6 watt. So just keep that in mind as we look through. There's 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 SSD. You can expand and add a two and a half inch drive and I'll show you what that looks like. There's two HDMI ports doing 2.0. We can base amount this. Uh, gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 5 already included, including Bluetooth 4.2. And this is running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. The one thing I do want to point out is the price. This right now is 150 US dollars on Amazon.com with a $20 coupon that they currently have. Or it's a 240 US dollars on the Camry website or 329 Canadian dollars on amazon.ca. They said they're going to give me a link for a discount, so I'll put that in the description, but let's talk about the actual device. And now let's do a teardown of the mini PC and let's just take a look and see what's inside. So I'm going to grab my iFixit kit here and try and look to see how you actually open this. And I probably should have looked at the manual first because I figured out that, no, you don't use a clip to get in here. Uh, you'll see in a second what you have to do. There's a little unlock clip and you unlock that and then the top just pops right off. So just unlock that and there you go. You have access to all of the internals. And the first thing you're going to see here is just the SATA cable so that you can connect a two and a half inch drive right in here if you wanted to. I have a two and a half inch drive just right here, so I'm just going to connect it and just make sure it fits and there's no issues. The cable does need to bend quite a bit just to get it to fit in there, but once you find the right way to put the cable, it just snaps right into place and everything looks good. So if you wanted to, that's an easy way to add extra storage. Now, also the 512 gig NVMe drive that is somewhere under all of this is replaceable according to Camry but it wasn't something that I was easily able to access. But we are going to tear it down and we'll look at what else is available. And so when you get rid of the 2.5 inch cage, you can see the RAM right here. And this is just a single stick of 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's almost 2700 megahertz of RAM here and it's easily replaceable. You can get to this pretty quickly. I'm not sure if you would want to actually replace the RAM on this device. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But if you wanted to, you have that option and this is the easy way to get to it. There's not much else to talk about in the teardown here. I took out the other screws that were holding back what looks like to be the shielding. And then under there, it just looked like the actual board. I couldn't see the NVMe drive and I'm not sure exactly where it might be. 
you likely have to take out the entire board just to get to it. And that wasn't something that I was planning on doing. So just keep that in mind. It is there somewhere and they say it's replaceable, but I'm not exactly sure where it might be. Let's pack this all up and we'll get into the good stuff. We'll look at what the benchmark scores are and then look at some games, as well as what this might be for and who this might be for. And the first benchmark scores that we're going to look at is the Geekbench 6 score. And we're going to look at the CPU first. The Geekbench 6 score for CPU is about 700 and then the multi score is about 1200. And then the GPU score is right around 2700. And then when we look at the 3D Mark score, we're at about a 347, which is normal for this processor. These aren't high scores by any stretch of the imagination, so if you're familiar at all with what these scores represent, you probably already know what this device would be good for. Unfortunately, I did not. I am not a tech tuber, I don't do benchmarks, I have no clue what these devices and processors are good for, so it was exciting for me to just figure that out through testing. And when I say exciting, I mean that in a bad way. I was really expecting a lot better here from this device for gaming, although I figured out later that this is not an actual gaming PC, and not by any stretch of the imagination. This, at a cap of 6 watts, is really good for just a mini browsing PC, something that you could just go on the net with, maybe use as a Plex client, something along those lines. But for actual gaming, you're about to see that this isn't really that good. And so I was a bit ambitious with my testing here. I ended up going with Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and just seeing if that would run. For some reason in my mind, I figured it was a mini PC that had a lot of power. But and this might be surprising to some, it runs at a 40-ish, 34 FPS, but it's not exactly playable. I wouldn't consider this for Wii U, especially unless we start to get a lot of optimization. So then I just decided to continue on and check some other platforms. And I figured 3DS would be a good one to jump to next. And don't look at why I went to these different platforms in the way that I did. This was just how I did it. But 3DS actually ran pretty well. We would get pretty close to a 60 frame rate, even in something like Fantasy Life. And so if you had me place where the actual performance of this would be, in all honesty, it might be close to a T618 chip. So I know I showed the RG405V earlier. That might be the closest comparison in performance to what this actually can do uh, from this chip. And so I got a little ambitious after 3DS and I decided to see how Dolphin might play with GameCube. And so I booted up F-Zero, which is one of the harder to run games on GameCube. And it was exactly what I expected from a T618 chip. I mean, we can get close to 50 frame rate here. It's mostly in the 30s to 40s, but maybe with some optimizations and some changes, we can get a little bit more. But it was actually surprising. This is, again, not for gaming in my opinion, but this ran a lot better than I expected. And so after emulation, I decided, let me check Hades. And I figured if it's an indie, it might be able to run really well. And you could probably see there, but we are dipping down quite a bit past the 60 FPS mark. And a lot of times we're hitting that 40 to 50. And for a game like Hades or any other indie, it's not something that you'd be comfortable with and having dips in. So if it can't run Hades, then you can imagine that the performance on this ship isn't that great. But again, this is 6 watts and not something that's completely surprising after you take that into account. But I was not looking at specs before I took in this device, so it was surprising to me. Just to continue the test that I wanted to keep going, this was Dead Cells. And Dead Cells is very similar to Hades in that respect. Uh, it wasn't hitting full frame rate at all. And again, I'm just kind of making the point here, this is really not a gaming device. But I was curious to see where that cap was. Where did it end? What games could you go with? And what couldn't you go with? And from what I could tell here, Dead Cells, Hades, Indies are not on the list of games that you'd be able to play. You'd probably have a good time with something like xCloud Streaming. That'd be just fine, because it's not using processing power. But for actual games, not that great. And just to round out those tests, I wanted to look at Cuphead. 
Again, I'm focusing in on indies here, just to see if I can find one that maybe might run well. And it's not like they run bad, it's just they're not running at full speed. Uh, and Cuphead here is another example where it's just not constantly at full speed, and it's just not a good experience in these type of games. So I did finally find one system that it played really well, and that was the PlayStation 1. I decided to just boot up Driver and just see how PlayStation 1 ran. And you can see here that we're running really well. There's no concern, no issue, everything's just fine. So if you want to see what the actual top end of this might be, I would probably peg it at Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1. That would be my guess. And just continuing that test, I booted up Crash Bandicoot as well, and it was more of the same. So just furthering what I think might be the top end for this device, which at 6 watts isn't too bad. And then getting ambitious again, I decided to see how PlayStation 2 ran and booted up God of War. And this didn't run well at all. So again, not a gaming device. We figured that out here after a lot and a lot of testing, but just want to show what my findings were because I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I could get to run on this device. So let's actually talk about what this device would be for. And I mentioned it earlier, but if you're looking for just something that's low powered, can browse the internet, can visit YouTube and do all that sort of thing, then this would be a good price, especially at 150 US dollars. Probably not the best price if you're Canadian or maybe elsewhere, but $150 for this package is a really good deal. Now, don't expect to play any games as you've seen today, and I wouldn't expect to do much else either. I tried using it for OBS. I was doing a live stream later that night and it wasn't able to keep up for encoding or anything along those lines. And then I also tried to use it in other scenarios like for Plex as an actual server. And I wasn't finding it able to keep up for transcoding or anything along those lines either. So for me, if you're looking at this device, it's through and through, you're just looking for a mini PC that can browse the internet. That's kind of it. So hope you liked the video. This was a bit outside of the normal. I figured it would be a more gaming centric mini PC that they'd sent me, uh, but this was something a little bit more for the just regular crowd that are looking for a regular desktop browser sort of system. And so hopefully that helps you out if you were looking at this to help make a decision. Don't forget to like and sub to help this channel grow, and I hope you all have a good one.